It's been more than two months since the deadly Hamas raid on Israel led to the seizure of more than 250 hostages. It's thought 150 are still in captivity. As you may have heard, on Friday, the Israeli military confirmed its troops mistakenly shot and killed three of the hostages in a Gaza gun battle. But in Israel, hostages who have been released are breaking their silence. Tonight on 60 Minutes, correspondent Leslie Stahl will talk with some of them. But this morning we hear from a physician charged with examining the hostages on their return home. About 100 Israeli hostages have been released after more than 50 days in captivity. At Sheba Medical Center, Dr. Itai Pesach and his team interviewed and examined many of them. This is where the hostages were brought. As I understand, virtually all of them, whether they wanted to come here first or not. We knew they would need a buffer um, from that time in captivity, underground, in the dark, uh, with very little food, um, with a lot of psychological stress. You have to remember that these people have, have not been around uh, since October 7th. On that infamous day, Hamas struck mainly the string of kibbutzes along the border with Gaza. Some of the houses were set on fire to smoke out the inhabitants. They had no home to go to, and they didn't know that. You basically had to tell them. One of the largest challenges that we had is how do we break the bad news? They look around the room, and they see that someone's missing. Oh, boy. Yeah. That was something we had to prepare for. Except for a brief ceasefire, there's been an almost constant Israeli bombardment of Gaza, much of which has been pummeled into wreckage, with half the population facing severe hunger. You think all Israelis have PTSD. Well, what about Gazans? I'm sure they are the same. And when they undergo events such as this, this will take its toll, and it doesn't matter if they are on this side or the other side. If you look at the pictures on television, as the hostages were coming back day after day, some of them don't look physically abused. Was that deceptive or? I think it was very deceptive. So there's not a single person that came back that didn't have a significant physical injury or a medical problem. On top of that, some of them were getting um, medication. Uppers to look better yeah. than they actually were. I just heard a story about a young person who was branded, branded, like the yeah. Holocaust. Did you see signs? Yes. You saw we, signs we of branding. Saw, we did see signs of branding. We definitely saw signs of uh, being uh, handcuffed. The stories of sexual abuse are just be emerging. And there are indications that this was central to the message that, that the terrorists wanted to send. We did um, hear and see evidence of uh, sexual abuse in a significant part of the people we have treated. We also heard evidence, and that was one of the hardest parts, of abuse against those that have stayed, both physical and sexual. You mean and the ones who are still there? Yes. Did you hear of a psychological torture uh, in that they were told Israel doesn't exist anymore. What I was what really struck me uh, is how prepared the, the Hamas terrorists were with their psychological torment. It was structured and pre-planned. They're constantly saying nobody cares about you. You are here alone. You hear the bombs falling. They don't care about you. We're here to protect you. And this is the really played with their, their minds. There have been some episodes when they separated two family members, separated them, and then brought them back together, and then separated them and oh, brought them back please. together. So as a parent, mm -hmm. you would do anything, anything in order to have your child with you, even when you're in captivity. Was there a protocol that you followed? Was there a formula how you talk? to a hostage, 
well, there was no protocol. We had to make that up as we went. And now, unfortunately, we are the world experts in, in receiving uh, people that were hostage 